We made it to Friday, guys. It is officially Friday, January 29th. This is The Street Live. I'm Catherine Ross, and Jim Kramer is off today, but I know that he's anxious to get back to work and will try to return as soon as possible. So filling his very large shoes today is Jeff Marks, Senior Portfolio Analyst with Action Alerts Plus. So, Jeff, I want to take a quick look at the markets. We've got the major indices down, but... On the bright side of things, we've got AMC up 45% and we got GameStop up 62%, a past 315 right now a share. What should we be watching in the markets? Is this really GameStop's game again? Well, I, I think the market futures, they were looking pretty bleak earlier this morning. And I think some of that had to do with some nervousness around the action that's going on with these Wall Street bet stocks. And I think the initial reaction to the J&J &J vaccine news, uh, which we can get into, brought some pressure as well as there was many that had hoped that this single dose shot uh, would have much stronger efficacy data, especially against some of these new variants. But uh, look, market participants, they came in, they, they bought the dip. I, 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 I think that although there's a lot of nervousness around some of the potential ramifications of the speculation, that's going on. I, I do think it is pretty isolated um, into a, a pocket of the market. And I think instead, if you look at, if you take a step back and you look at the much bigger picture, earnings are earnings are being reported every single day, and and they've been better than expected. They've been pretty good, and and uh, we we've, we've heard from some industrial components today, Caterpillar, Honeywell. Um, uh, those those both came in better than expected. Um, so I, I, we had some uh, Skyworks last night, very strong report from them, and, and you know they they uh, they're in the, in the semiconductor component. So I think uh, you know as, as long as those earnings are good, I, I think people can and and we do see progress on the vaccine rollout and, and the J and J. That, that's a third vaccine, so that that's huge. That's big news in getting people uh, immunized. So uh, I think that's kind of why people came in. They they were. We're buying this dip, and and I think there's you know it's a, it's another long day, and we'll see what happens with with the Game Stops and the AMC's of the world, and and I know they've been halted trading numerous times already. So, um, but I, I don't think it was the, the market is shaping up to be as bad as, as what it looked like in the early early hours this morning. Well, Jeff, I think it's safe to say that Reddit truly has been the dominant story of the week, and it hasn't just been the dominant story for finance. I mean, I've appeared on sports podcasts to talk about this. I've seen my friends send me memes. It's it's really sunken into mainstream uh, media as of this week. So I want to take a look at what happened yesterday, especially with Robinhood and with some of the other brokerages that place restrictions, because when I was discussing with Wall Street Bets investors and other people on Twitter, a lot of people told me that they don't trust these brokerages anymore because of the restrictions. And they are also worried about investing in general. So, Jeff, you're a finance guy. Let's pare this down. What kind of message do you have for the retail traders and investors who are worried about putting their money in these online brokerages? Yeah, so as we learned, uh, you know, through the later in the day, course of the night, um, Robinhood, they had to put in these restrictions to preserve their own uh, liquidity. And, and while I think it was unfortunate what happened because um, everyone is entitled to their right to trade any security, whether they want to buy it or sell it, I, I think there was something larger what was going on within the, the plumbing of the system, if you will. So I think that's why Robin had to do, Robin Hood had to do what they did. And, and we saw today that they uh, they uh, raised another billion dollars in equity to more cash for them um, just to you know, keep the system going. Um, and, and we saw last night that they also drew down some credit lines from some major banks as well, just to make sure that the liquidity was there. But for the retail traders i'll keep it simple and i'll just say again um be careful what you're buying because what you're buying right now that these stocks there i just think they're at unsustainable prices and valuations and it just it, it the valuations just don't make sense when you look at how the businesses are performing um especially relative to peers so look, I think that if you've made a lot of money in these, I, congratulations, you won the game. So why risk giving that up when you've when you when you when you probably have these huge profits in these positions? 
And that's really how I look at it. Um, I think it's just as simple as, as simple as that. Totally fair point. I, I do want to just point out for viewers, um, based on my reporting and the conversations I've had, it does seem, interestingly enough, that a lot of these Wall Street bets investors who maybe didn't join into the, let's not call it a frenzy, but into the excitement around um, GameStop originally are now thinking about joining or have joined in buying shares of GameStop since the brokerages placed these restrictions. So it's definitely going to be a continuing story to watch and I always appreciate getting your advice. And I know that Jim had some advice too earlier today. So Jeff, I wanna take this opportunity and kind of switch into vaccine talk and earnings talk because if we're being quite frank, that's what's going to be driving these major indices. You know, we're not going to be looking at GameStop when we're asking why the Dow is down uh, half a percent right now. So. We got some good news out of J&J &J about their single dose COVID-19 vaccine, but there was a concern that it's less effective against the South Africa strain, which has now been seen in the United States, specifically in South Carolina. So should investors use this as an opportunity to buy J&J &J, or do we need to see more data about the variants in your opinion? Well, I think there'll be more data that, that comes out um, soon, but I think people were, you know, by and large, they were hoping to see an efficacy number that rivaled uh, Moderna or Pfizer. Um, but I just think of, on the grander scheme of things, I think the data is, is good enough, especially when we just need to get vaccines in the arms of as many people as possible, as soon as possible. So I think for the stock, I, I think, look, you can let it shake out a little bit because I think there were some people buying, hoping that this would be an absolute knockout um, one dose vaccine. So now instead, after you let those people shake out, what you have to look back towards is the fundamentals of a business, which which you just brought up. And, and I think if I'm looking at the fundamentals of J&J, &J, I think it's quite good. I think you have a pharmaceutical business that consistently delivers growth growth above, above where the market is growing, the pharmaceutical market. You have a medical device business that's going to rebound in 2021 as all these hospitals, they open up their, their beds again for elective procedures and that comes back. And you have a consumer product business that's just a stable grower um, year after year. So it's also a great play on the weak dollar and they have a pristine balance sheet. So I think, yeah, let it shake out. And then I, I would use weakness as a buying opportunity because uh, J and J, I think it's a great company, and and I think the business is performing very well, and 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 the fundamentals matter over the long run, and I think that uh, I think that it's positive for J and J. Speaking of fundamentals, one sector that Jim and I have been talking about for a, a lot over the past couple of months is oils. And I want to bring this up because Chevron posted earnings and the company posted a surprise loss on refining in its in its report. So, Jeff, how should investors approach oil specifically during earnings season? So I, I think if you want to be in oil, just some things to look for. You want to be in the ones that have the ability to lower their break even costs. Um, that way they can stay profitable, even if uh, the commodity, the price of the commodities do fall lower. Um, you want to be in the ones that have the cash flow to pay the dividends um, and support the balance sheet. But in general, my approach to oil, it's just a tough sector for me because I think there's going to be uh, significant headwinds this group is going to face over the next five to 10 years with regards to ESG investing. ESG investing, we're seeing more and more dollars um, go that way, and they do not want to be uh, invested in an area that is detrimental uh, detrimental to the uh, to the climate. So I, I think that's just too much of a headwind uh, that I just, it's an uphill battle for them from uh, investing dollars wise. And I want to go where the, you know, where I, where I believe the money is going to be invested, where the dollars are flowing tomorrow. And, and I just don't think over the longer term, the oil, uh, the oil, the oil, the oil stocks are that. So then let's look at an AAP name, an Action Alerts Plus name for those of you who are not familiar. That is our Jim Cramer's club um, who, who have a portfolio. And as I said at the top of the show, Jeff is the senior portfolio analyst for it. And we actually are going to go to our um, daily rundown show, which is exclusive for members on it right afterwards. But before we do that, I kind of want to get your take on Honeywell. Now they did beat on profit and sales. And Jeff, if an investor is watching this and they don't really know what Action Alerts Plus is, they're kind of looking at Honeywell, but they're not quite sure what to do. Can you give us a sneak peek of what kind of advice you're giving to members following this earnings report? 
Yeah, so uh, it's a great question. I got to dive into the quarter a little bit deeper. I had to step off the conference call just uh, for this video. But as you mentioned, Honeywell, good quarter. Uh, top and bottom line beat, driven by better than expected arrow and strength in, in, in their safety and productivity solution segment, which which is always the one I've always focused in more in most because I know Aero, Aero is going to be their biggest business. And that's that's the one you really want to watch for as as, he, as uh, travel rebounds. That's really what's going to be the driver there. But this SPS business is growing uh, at a very fast clip. It's being driven by warehouse automation, which is a play on e-commerce and, uh, and also strong demand for PPE. So everyone thinks it's Honeywell as this... Um, as this old school industrial, but the company is really much more than that. And that's what we try and explain in AAP, whether it's through um, you know, they, their exposure to a trend like e-commerce, or there's also a very large software component that management focuses on. And we believe software, it's, it's typically higher margin business. They sell it out um, software as a service. So it's, it's, it's much less cyclical. Then when I think people think of industrials, everyone thinks of a very cyclical in nature. But what we're trying to explain is that Honeywell is, is a lot less cyclical than what many believe. And that's why we think it's supportive of a higher multiple for the stock as well. So um, it's a great company. We'll have more to say over on Actual Learners Plus. But that's kind of sort of the, uh, the investment thesis that we've been talking about with Honeywell um, since we bought the name uh, uh, earlier this summer. Not only are we going to be talking about Honeywell, but quite honestly, Jeff, I'm looking at Boeing right now, and it's kind of interesting. So I'm excited to talk to you about that. So with that, we are now heading over to our Action Alerts Plus Daily Rundown show. It's Friday, y'all. Enjoy the weekend. Stay safe. Jim Cramer will try to be back as soon as possible. And with that, I'm Catherine Ross, and we'll see you on Monday.